Hey everyone, it's Gan from Peppy's Taxi, and today we're going to look at the Surface Style and see how it can help you edit videos in Premiere Pro. All right, so let's get right to it. So I have my Surface Style right here, and I have my Windows 10 desktop here. And I'm using this just to show you that you don't need a Surface uh, book, laptop, studio, whatever to use a Surface Style. Just Bluetooth and Windows 10. So assuming that you already have this connected to Bluetooth, all we need to do now is just go down here, you can type, hit the Windows key and just type wheel. So wheel settings will pop up, you hit that. And this is where you control all the tools and everything you need for uh, your Surface Dial. So with this here, um, when you hit the Surface Dial and you hold on to it, this menu pops up and you can see the tools that are available uh, for the Surface Dial within this application. So the standard four tools are volume, uh, scroll, zoom, and undo. So volume, as you can guess, volume knob, which is pretty cool. Uh, scroll, just scrolling through long desktop, uh, pardon me, long documents and uh, web pages. So uh, our scenario here is that we wanna use it in Premiere. So I have some tools that I already have set up here. I'm just gonna remove them. And I'll just show you how to do this. Uh, to set this up, this works for any application. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how I use it in Premiere. So simply pop over here to add an app, click that. And you can see some applications that support this. I'm going to go to Premiere Pro and add a tool. So let me just show you what we actually have built into Premiere Pro. So with uh, Premiere Pro, we have set up right here so again when I hold on to the surface dial the menu pops up and you can see that's a little bit different here that's because Premiere I have this one that I actually added just right now and uh, Premiere Pro the logo there shows jog slash shuttle and that's the one that's already pre-built into Premiere Pro that supports the surface dial so when I click that you can see that as I turn the surface dial it's skipping through uh, different things here so you can see that goes through. But the problem with this is that I'm not even touching it. It just continues to scroll and it doesn't really stop even when I'm turning it the other way. So ideally, what we'd want, let me stop that. Ideally, what we'd want is when I turn this just one turn, it would turn one frame. It'd go forward one frame or backwards one frame. And we could actually do that with uh, the tool setup that we have here. So once you're here, uh, again, all you need to do is add a tool. So I already have this one. So it's gonna call this one Timeline Scrub. So in Premiere Pro, to move forward or backward one frame, all you have to do is hit the left and right keys. So right, see that going forward one frame, going backward one frame. So let me just go here. So all we wanna do for rotating right is make that equal to the right key. So we're gonna bind it there by just hitting right. And for left, none on this side and left on this side. That's just because you don't need to get control shift or whatever in the action keys. And lastly, when I click the dial, I want it to play and pause. So to do that, you just use the space bar and here it is. Okay, perfect. So it's timeline scrub. So let me show you here. Again, hold on to the surface dial and just scroll through what you want. And you see Timeline Scrub's already been added. So when I click that, now here, this is the, the issue that a lot of people have with uh, once I set this up. So when I'm turning right, you see these sixes are popping up. And when I turn left, these fours. So I found that there's a few ways to get around this. If you wanna just use your left and right uh, key banks that we already have set up here, um, say you're using all the other keys for custom functions in Premiere, all you have to do is hit numlock, and when you turn numlock off, then it works perfectly fine. You see that? And just looking at this, you can tell how how simple and great this would be for video editing, right? Frame by frame control, you can do it slowly, each frame, or you can do it fast and you can go faster. And there is this vibration in the surface dial, which makes it so much cooler to use and it enhances the experience so much. So every turn, like I moved one frame and I felt that here with the vibration. 
and you can see that frame by frame. So you have like precision control over the timeline. And that's really nice there. And uh, of course you could just turn off vibration. Let's go back here. You could turn off vibration if you don't like that, but some of that control is lost. So let's go back to Premiere. I like that vibration there. Let's see. And you can see that too. That's something that's really cool at Service Dial. So right now it's automatically goes back to Timeline Scrub. And over here, it's back as a volume knob. But say you need numlock, say you're changing the scale, doing animations, keyframes, etc., and you want to quickly enter numbers. Like that's how I prefer to use it. So one way to get around this numlock issue is to go over here, go to edit in Premiere, and go to keyboard shortcuts. And once you have this, once you see the standard pre, uh, Premiere Pro setup here, you can see that there are a bunch of unbound keys. So F11 and F12 right here. Uh, they don't do anything in Premiere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set those two to the left and right. So let's go back to Premiere Pro here, customize. And in the wheel settings, all we gotta do is add another tool. So I'll just call this Timeline Scrub 2. And once again, uh, we're just doing F11 and F12. So for rotating right, let's do F12, that makes more sense. Rotating left, F11. And for click, again, we're just gonna do spacebar uh, for play and pause. All right, so you see that there, set up. It should be available here. Yeah, right there, timeline scrub two. And what we need to do here in Premiere is bind those two to turning left and turning right. So if I write step, you see that the left key is here, left arrow and right arrow for forward and backwards. So left, I believe you send to F11, so just hit F11 here. And all you have to do again is just hit to the, just click to the right of the last bound key and F12 for forward. You can see it popped up right there. And now we're in time two, sorry, still in time at one here. So in timeline scrub two, and I've turned numlock on, it's still working. Numlock off, it's still working perfectly fine. And you can tell that that takes away that whole issue from before. Now, the only other issue I can see is if you don't have two free keys. And with that, I guess you just have to live with uh, the numlock uh, issue. You just turn numlock off and hit left and right and turn it on when you need it. But if you know a fix for that, just let me know in the comments and you might be able to help some others. But yeah, you can see that this is so useful for uh, video editing. Say I'm going through this animation, just hit, hit the keys, go forward and backwards. And it's just so cool. And of course, if for some reason you wanted to use F11 and F12, you could do that too. But yeah, I think this is, it, this has helped me so much over the past few years. Is it necessary? Not at all. Is it cool? Yes. And it helps you so much. I mean, it feels just so natural um, just scrubbing through the timeline with this. And you can use these to any keybinds that you find useful in any application. So you can see how content creators uh, might love this thing. And, um, but what I found is ideally you'd want them to be bound to things that make sense. Volume, you have volume now. Scroll wheels, you, you have scroll wheels to scroll. Um, and this, like, it's, it feels like you're kind of like rolling through tape, scrubbing through tape for film. So that's what it feels natural. And of course, if you wanted to use it for other applications, other uses in Premiere, just go back to wheel settings, add a tool, do whatever shortcuts you need. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.